Hi folks and welcome to the Peel Kitty channel. We are playing some rage here in week two of the FPS exploration. Um, so last week I played some Half-Life 2 and that was an older game which required me to play by mouse and keyboard, um, which is what I'm largely used to. But this is a newer game and it does actually have the option to play using your gamepad. So I am doing that using my fabulous pink controller. And just like last time, to stretch myself a little bit, I'm, I'm, I may not be going for nightmare, but I'm at least going to go for normal so that I am stretching myself just a little bit. I love the little bobblehead. Talk is cheap in this world. Action is needed. First, take the pistol and supplies from the counter. Then grab one of the ATVs and head up north to the ghost hideout. Don't come back until they're completely wiped out. You do this for me and I'll give you some old arc armor to fit that arc suit you're wearing. Sounds like a plan. Interesting. You can actually look at all of your statistics right in here. Which for some people is super awesome because they like to uh, watch the numbers. Anything in the box? Ooh. Canned corn! Twin Peaks, y'all! Well, I don't know where they all are, but I'm suspecting that they're all going to jump out at once. In the meantime, we're going to take all their stuff. Ooh, what's this? I think that this is really funny because this might be like the first time I've ever seen bathrooms really in a game. It's not very often, I mean I guess sometimes, not very often though do you actually see washrooms. And I think that's funny because like, well, you know, people use you as a washroom. Oh, that's cool that you actually see like double vision. Oh, oh. Those are right past each other. Well, this is complicated. Cool. I got some dollars. Dollar bills, yo, dollar bills. Did I just see somebody? Yeah. <laughs> he was all gung ho to come after me, and then I got him. Those sticks are freaking wicked. They look cool, and they're awesome. I think it's good to maybe save them though for when they're like close up on you. Although that defibrillator thing is kind of neat too. Oh my god, the red mist. <laughs> that was a pretty brutal grenade. <laughs> this looks fun. I am a ghostbuster! Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Did you see me? I crashed and then my body went Tell you what, I'm definitely buying some more of those wing sticks. <laughs> Cat food is wasteland delicacy. <laughs> more cards. More bottles. I didn't realize this game actually had so much like inventory stuff like to play with. 
which is definitely something that we're going to talk about when we're like doing the role playing genre. The sky's really pretty. Close up detail and stuff is not that nice, but the like overall look of the game is actually pretty nice. I received the first engineering recipe! To use it, go to the engineering screen in your inventory. So it looks like there's like a little bit of crafting going on in here, which is interesting. Oh, right. There's an like in-game game, uh, which I haven't seen yet, but I need to see Hendrick and Wellspring to be able to do that, I guess. I find it interesting too that like you're in first person, but then when you're on the vehicle, you're in third person. It's a little bit strange. I got all the things. I got the radio. I got my own mobile. Vroom, vroom. Bullets with bullets within bullets. And they all fire at once. Must buy. Stop shooting at me. Nice parking job I did there. Alright, you do that. Hello, sir. Got a man here to see you. My buggy's still going over there. I love this, like, you know, Western futuristic feel. And the music, just that tiny little bit of music that just showed up there was, makes me want to go and watch Firefly. <laughs> With his, like, desk there and uh, the helmet, he looks like the pilot from first game. <laughs> okay, so we've got a wastelander. Look like a local. Receive a discount on all cash purchases. Vehicle parts not included. Uh, a roughneck. Roughnecks are rugged. Increase your protection from all the stuff that hurts. Vehicles not included. Fabricator. Build stuff like a pro. Enhance most of the cool things you engineer. Pocket protector not included. That sounds pretty awesome. Let's go with that one. Confirm selection. So this is the game within the game. Let's see how this works. Tombstones destroy the mutants before they reach the sheriff. Each crosshair rolled will kill one mutant. The fewer the rolls, the higher the multiplier. Best luck. I see.
I lost. Let's play that again. No. Oh. It's interesting that like racing is such a big part of of the game as well. I didn't realize how much of a hybrid this game actually was. Um, sure. This here is a simple game of cards. Bit of chance, bit of strategy, but all good fun. So this is what we use the cards that we were collecting earlier for. This actually looks fairly complicated. Okay. So we're gonna add that, add that. Okay. Oh, and then start game. Here we go. Only attack. Melee cards can only attack cards directly across from themselves. If there are no cards to attack, they have the option to guard reducing incoming damage by 50%. Guarded cards are shown with shield overlay. Okay. Okay. Explosive card. Explosive cards damage all opponents' cards when they enter the play area. However, they destroy themselves in the process and do not stay in your hand. Okay. Ranged cards. Ranged cards have the ability to choose their targets, allowing them to remove cards that may pose a threat. However, when a vehicle is in play, they must target and destroy the vehicle before being able to select any target again. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Doing so good. Hmm. Vehicle card. Vehicle cards are only 
capable of guarding, making them a strong defensive card. When a vehicle card is in play, any ranged cards must target this card and destroy it before targeting other cards. All right. Taking cover. If a card is unable to perform an attack or heal action during its turn, you will be able to set the card to a guard state by selecting take cover. While taking cover, all damage to that card is reduced by half. Okay. So we will take cover. Oh shit, man, she heals. pretty in depth for a little like mini game within the game. Like it's it's a cool way of actually using the collectibles that you get within a game too, right? Like It's pretty neat. Good to know. <gasps> Sweet. I've been eyeing that thing since the beginning of the game. I did get him. Crossbow feels a little bit more twitchy than the other stuff. Than the guns. further than here for all your vehicle needs. There's actually quite a bit of customization for the vehicles. Like it's such a huge part of the game. Drive like you mean it, friend. I actually quite enjoy these little fights that like once you drive into a zone, then you like have this challenge to, you know, beat these bad guys and they level up each time you do it, then it gets a little bit more difficult. So that's why all the customization for the, for the vehicles, which is pretty cool. Just adds another layer to the game.
Best I take a closer look at you, too. Interesting. Very interesting. You got all those little computers racing around inside you. But you aren't going to last long in a firefight against the Authority with that standard defibrillator in your chest. I can give you an upgrade for it, something that might keep you alive longer. But that will require a little effort on your part. You see, I don't have the necessary equipment here. But you can find what you need in the dead city. It's interesting, because, you know, it, again, like, this is such a hybrid, you actually will, you know, get to increase your defibrillator ability. And this guy... I ended up using all of my bullets and uh, the only thing I had left was the uh, sniper rifle. I was worried I had like, beaten the boss and was going to get killed by a uh, runt. <laughs> I'm really trying to keep these highlights compact, but it was really hard with Rage because it's such an expansive game. I didn't even realize when I started playing it how varied the gameplay was going to be and what was all going to be included within that. So I still had that FPS experience of being able to use a multitude of different, you know, ranged weapons that I really enjoyed the fact that they had some very unique weapons and ammo that kind of varied that play. But I mean, it also had, you know, inventory and being able to kind of manage that and be able to go to town and buy and sell stuff and be able to talk to the townsfolk, um, which really added to the story element of the game. And I really enjoyed that. It really made me feel immersed. And I surprisingly enough, I even enjoyed the um, areas of the game where I was on the vehicle and having to kind of race around and vehicle combat. It was actually pretty enjoyable and I'm generally pretty terrible at driving games. So I thought that that was really interesting. It was just such a varied experience. Even the like in-game games were relatively, you know, interesting and added to the flavor of the game. And speaking of flavor, I mean, I love that aesthetic, that cowboy meets post-apocalyptic um, futuristic world that's totally up my alley. I love that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed this game and I do actually plan on spending some more time with it. I hope that you enjoyed looking at this game with me and I hope that you stay tuned for some more games. We're going to be playing some more FPS games next week and then we'll be moving on to a new genre. So certainly subscribe if you're interested in following this journey of exploration exploration within games and uh, like and share if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in a game soon.